After 27 years of marriage, Bill and Melinda Gates are calling it quits. The couple say they will remain co-chairs and trustees of their foundation, which is the world's largest philanthropic organization. But even so, the divorce is creating questions about the fate of, their, of that and of their $130 billion fortune. Here now to talk about this is attorney Mercedes Colwyn. She's also a Fox Business contributor. Mercedes, thanks for joining us. Great to be here, Jerry. Thank you. So, as we say, this has been, they've been an enormously influential uh, philanthropic organization, handing out tens of billions of dollars over the years. Not everybody sure. necessarily likes everything they do. They do seem to have a slight pension for, telling, for, for thinking right. that, they, <laughs> that they can tell people uh, how they should be living their lives, as well as, as well as handing out lots of money. But it's a significant, it's a significant amount of money. Is, will the divorce change anything? I mean, it is the Bill and, um, you know, Lind and Melinda Gates Foundation. Does it change anything? Will there be complications as a result of the divorce? Will there be more? Will there be less? Do you think there'll be less philanthrop philanthropic funds to hand out? Well, no, to their credit, just the opposite. They are such passionate, brilliant individuals who are so committed to their philanthropic foundation that they have decided to continue co-chairing, and that's what they've done. That's at least what their, their aspirations are, is to continue to work in the foundation, continue with their passionate work, helping it globally what their passions are. So it looks right now that that's what their intention is. In fact, there's even a separation agreement, because here in the, in the state of Washington, it's a community property state so essentially it's split right down the middle but us but not to going that route the gates decided to have a separation agreement and that's where they have put in all the stipulations between the two sides as to how they're going to divide the property up and presumably this is not publicly filed but presumably how they will continue to co-chair the foundation what is it with the state of Washington and billionaire marriages? We just saw Jeff Bezos' uh, marriage uh, uh, dissolved a couple of years ago. Um, and also, by the way, also big right. ph philanthropists. Um, is it, though, I mean, is, is, the, is this only purely then a, a personal matter? You don't think it's going to affect at all their ability to continue to, uh, to contribute to these causes? No, these are fiduciaries. I mean, like as any organization, whether you're not for profit or for profit, these are directors and officers of the organization. They have fiduciary duties. They've made this commitment to the organization. They're going to be held by law to the standards that they are to execute with the best jud in their best judgment how to execute the, the what the foundation and what they're required to do. So, frankly, I don't think that's going to happen. These are two very lawyered up brilliant people i'm sure that they've got the they've gotten a lot of information from their lawyers both sides i'm sure are heavily lawyered and they've been able to forge this agreement and in that agreement they're going to forge ahead but if there is jerry if there's somehow a breakdown of communication it starts to affect the operations of the organization there's a board that can make changes to who can head up that organization. So that board in, in itself, the directors and officers at the board also have a fiduciary duty to the organization. So everyone's on their P's and Q's. They're required by law and presumably they're going to abide by what the law requires. Yeah, briefly, Mercedes, that's what I was going to ask you. If, if they, you know, obviously their, their lives are diverging, they've always had slightly different interests, a, share, a lot of shared interests, philanthropic mm -hmm. interests, but they have slightly different interests. If they, you know, if, if they now find themselves wanting to, you know, fund different things uh, or, or pursue different right. uh, philanthropic opportunities, does it become more difficult now that they've also, as you say, does it just the trust just takes over and they could just carry on as they have? Well, I mean, that's a great question. Essentially, it will have to be how it's done. We, I don't have the bylaws of the organization, but presumably there is a, there's some voting that goes on. The, the directors and officers can be involved. So something will happen that there can be the operations are not paralyzed in any way or affected in any way if there is a breakdown in communication between the gates. But as I said, I mean, they have a long track record with the foundation. They are very passionate about the foundation and what it stands for. I can't imagine that they would let their personal differences come to have become any sort of impediment. Well, in the thank future. you. Uh, we, of course, wish them and their family uh, all the very best. Thanks very much, Mercedes Colley. Absolutely. My pleasure.